Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, thriller film from 2004 title, National Treasure. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Our story begins in a dark attic in 1974. A young boy named Ben is exploring and finds a book. He is discovered by his grandpa who tells him a story. In 1832, a man is going to see the president. The president is not there so he leaves his secret of a treasure with Ben's ancestor, Thomas Gates. The treasure had vanished centuries ago but was discovered by the Knights Templar who became the Freemasons. By the time of the Civil War, it was hidden away with only some clues as to its whereabouts remaining. Thomas was given a clue that read, The secret lies with Charlotte. They are interrupted by Ben's father, Patrick, who rubbishes the story. Years later, Ben is traveling through the Arctic with two guys named Ian and Riley. They are in a team searching for a buried ship. Ben digs down and uncovers a part of the ship, it has the name Charlotte they explore the ship and find bodies. The captain was guarding a barrel. Ben opens the barrel and discovers a casket with an ornate pipe inside. The pipe holds a riddle which Ben tries to solve. He determines that an invisible map has been drawn on the back of the Declaration of Independence. Ian thinks that he can arrange to borrow the declaration but when Ben refuses most of the men turn on him, telling him that he is now a hindrance. Ben tells them that there is more to the riddle that only he can solve and so they threaten to shoot Riley unless he tells them. Ben starts a fire but Ian locks them inside. However, they escape through a smuggler's hole before the ship explodes. Some time later, Ben and Riley try to inform the FBI of Ian's intentions but they don't believe them. In the National Archives, they go to visit Dr. Abigail Chase. Ben is fascinated by her button collection but notices that there is one missing. He asks for permission to examine the declaration to see if there is an invisible encryption on the back. She refuses and they leave forlorn. They go to see the document behind a glass screen and Ben decides that he is going to steal it. Riley tells him that it is impossible and explains the security precautions that are in place to prevent a theft. Ben reveals that the document will be sent to the preservation room during a gala this weekend where it will be far more vulnerable. They start to make preparations for the robbery. Ben sends Abigail the button that she has missing from her collection, which he has coated with invisible ink. Riley goes to the archive and activates a heat sensor. Abigail receives a call and goes to the preservation room to check, entering a password on a keyboard where she unknowingly leaves a coating of invisible ink. Riley watches the cameras and can see that they are removing the document for inspection. Ian is preparing explosives with a guy named Shaw. Ben arrives at the gala and his preparations allow him instant access. Meanwhile, Ian arrives for his raid. Ben meets Abigail at the party and she thanks him for his gift. He switches champagne glasses with her in order to obtain her fingerprints. Ian's crew and Ben head to the preservation room at the same time. Riley disables the security camera and Ben deciphers the access code. Ben arrives in the preservation room and starts to remove the document. Suddenly Riley loses his camera feed as Ian's crew take over the signal. Ben decides to take the document in the case but as he gets to the elevator, Ian and his crew arrive. They shoot at him but Ben gets in the elevator and manages to remove the document from its case. A security guard realizes that something is wrong and raises the alarm. Ben tries to leave and is followed by Abigail. Outside she asks him what is going on, when suddenly the alarms sound. She realizes that he took the Declaration of Independence and wrests it from him. Ben gets into the van with Riley and they drive away. From a distance, Ian sees Abigail with the document and they abduct her. Ben and Riley give chase and are able to rescue her but Ian retains the document. However, Ian soon realizes that it was a replica that Ben took from the gift shop. Ben reveals that he still has the original and will run tests on it later. He knows that the FBI will discover his identity but states that he needs some letters, the silence do good letters. He will need to go to his father's house to see the originals. Back at the gala, Detective Sadusky takes charge. The investigations lead them to Ben's apartment where they discover copies of the letters. Meanwhile Ian also deciphers the code. Ben goes to see his father and asks for the letters but Patrick is angry and tells him to get out. Ben reveals that he found the Charlotte but Patrick believes that the treasure is a myth and that Ben will continue looking for clues for the rest of his life. Regardless, they inspect the declaration and uncover some hidden numbers which relate to the silence do good letters. However, his father reveals that he donated them to the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Some time later, the FBI arrives at the house to find Patrick has been tied up. He gives them no information. Ben arrives in Philadelphia and Riley gets a kid to go and decipher the code for them. As he gets the last few words, Ian notices the kid and follows him outside but Riley has already left. Riley goes to meet Ben and Abigail with the deciphered code. They check the time on the clock that is pictured on the back of a $100 bill. It says 2.22. Ian bribes the kid to give him the information that he gave to Riley and they head to see the Liberty Bell. Ben, Abigail and Riley are already in the clock tower and at 2.22 they watch where the shadow of the tower falls and head to that location where Ben finds a symbol carved into a brick. 
he cuts out the brick and discovers some kind of ocular device. Ian is following but Ben is still one step ahead. They unroll the Declaration of Independence and using the spectacles Ben can see a new clue. They spot Ian's crew arriving and decide to split up with the various clues. Ian and Shaw spot them and start to pursue them. During the chase, Abigail drops the Declaration of Independence and Ian picks it up. As Ben goes to meet the others, he is suddenly caught by the FBI who take him into custody. Abigail and Riley see this happen and flee. She asks Riley if he knows how to get in contact with Ian. Ben is being interrogated and is told that he has two options, number one go to prison or number two help the FBI retrieve the declaration and go to prison for a long time, but feel better inside. As he is sitting there, he realizes that there must have been more to the previous clue than he saw. Suddenly Ben receives a call from Ian and the FBI listens in. Ian asks him to meet on the flight deck of the USS Intrepid in New York, and to bring the glasses. Furthermore he tells the FBI, who he knows are listening, to let him come alone or he will shred the declaration. The following morning, Ben is on the USS Intrepid. A helicopter flies in and a device causes interference in Ben's communicator. During the disruption, Ben is given instructions but the FBI are unable to hear. Ben moves towards the observation deck at the stern of the ship. He assures Sadusky that he is not against him but he has discovered a third option. Ben jumps overboard as Sadusky scrambles the divers. Underwater, Ben is rescued by Ian's crew. He is soon informed that Abigail is now calling the shots and is put on the phone with her. She tells him that she has made a deal with Ian. They are currently near the location that they think the previous clue indicated and that is where they are bringing Ben. As he arrives, Ian greets him and the various clue objects are given to Ben. Ian now asks where the treasure is located. Ben tells Ian what he knows before attempting to leave. However, Ian believes that Ben knows more than he is saying and reveals that he has his father held hostage. Ben tells Ian that they need to go inside Trinity Church. Ben begs Ian to release his father but Ian now reveals that he also has Riley and Abigail prisoner. Ben takes another look at the map and reveals that it also says, beneath Parkington Lane. Everyone goes to the crypt beneath the church where Riley discovers a stone that says Parkington Lane. They break through the stone revealing a tunnel. They all start to climb through until they reach more chambers. Ben suddenly kisses Abigail. As they continue, one of the gang members falls through some rotten floorboards to his death which starts a chain reaction of destruction through years of decay. Abigail and Ben step onto an ancient elevator system and fall further. They nearly drop the declaration but manage to get both it and themselves to safety. Everybody gathers together again and uses the elevator to get to the bottom where they continue through more tunnels. They come to a final chamber but it appears to be a dead end. Ben rants that the treasure has been moved and there are no more clues. Ian doesn't believe him and decides to leave them all down here unless Ben tells him the next clue. Patrick suddenly reveals that he knows the next step. The hanging lantern signifies that the next clue is under another hanging lantern in Boston. Ian leaves them anyway but then Patrick reveals that it was, in fact, a fake clue. They walk back into the chamber and find a pictograph of an eye. Ben finds a button and presses it, revealing the entrance to the treasure room. However, the treasure room is empty. Ben is disappointed and tells his father that he was right. Patrick says no, Ben followed the clues and if the treasure room exists then so did the treasure. He has never been so happy to have been proved wrong. They all resolve to carry on looking for the treasure. Ben believes that there should be another way out. The pipe operates a key stone which takes them into yet another chamber where they finally discover the treasures in another way out. Ben calls Sadusky and returns the declaration. Ben asks only that his team and family get credit for discovering the treasure and that it be shared amongst many museums. In Boston, Ian and his gang are apprehended by the FBI. With a cash award, Ben has bought a huge estate and Riley bought a sports car. As the movie ends Abigail presents Ben with another treasure map. Like and subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.